and we're talking James Gunn tonight for that 9 o'clock heat. Ah, uh, I gotta say, I gotta talk about this. Look, I'll just say, look, as I'm talking to you, we're seeing James Gunzy Boise's post. This is his post, and if you're a flat earther, you would be, oh, you'd be so offended at this post. But it's, it's Superman and the little doggy dog, Crypto, uh, looking at the world, and it's like a tender moment. And it's a reminder that we haven't seen anything from this movie that's universally accepted. Uh, I've been I've been right a hell of a lot on this channel. I've been wrong, maybe two 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 of my big wrongs. Right? I said no one would care about the original Joker movie, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker. I said no one would care. I was wrong, and I said <laughs> Doctor Doom would never replace Kang. Ah, but hey, guys. That's what happens when you make opinions. You know, you, you, you if, if you're in the cycle putting out one opinion a day or constant opinions, you, you're, you're going to be wrong so many more times than you're right. And I just don't feel like that's something to be. Like, what is that exactly? I, 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 I'm just confused. So I put out some opinions, like the 9 o'clock heat. Nothing James Gunn has uh, put out about this movie is universally accepted. We have roughly six, seven heroes, roughly six, seven villains. The movie already seems packed, bloated, doesn't seem fun, doesn't seem imaginative. No one likes what well, we all know how the how it's going to look on camera, but no one seems to like Superman's costume. I don't like the S because it's a Kingdom Come S. You have to do the Kingdom Come S six or seven movies down the road. Because it's a uh, it's a deconstruction, it's a symbol of the deconstruction of Superman, where Superman has evolved into something else. He doesn't start with the Kingdom Come S. I'm I'm sick of saying. It. <laughs> By the way, so what what's my what, what's my problem with crypto? I I'll just say this: crypto doesn't excite. Crypto's not fun. James Gunn already tried to make Cosmo a thing in the MCU. Didn't happen. No one's respecting how much Rocket Raccoon was an anomaly to become funny, successful, and a, and a major piece of merchandise himself. Rocket Rocket Raccoon. Anomaly. Okay, guys. Like, even even King Shark, right? He, he tried to cutinize King Shark. And it popped for like six months. And then... Then there it goes. Yeah, you know, look, the people were selling Superboy Zero, the Zero Hour issue. The Superboy Zero was in like a hundred and twenty, hundred seventy-five dollar range. Now it's like a forty, thirty dollar book. It goes to show you, right? But I get what he's doing with crypto. I will go to the comic and let me just tell you about people's temperament towards crypto. Jeff Lo. Jeff Loeb, during this like nice little renaissance, I, I call it the Worlds at War Superman Renaissance, where we had some of the best writers. We had like relatively the men of action, the guys that went on to create Ben 10. We had guys like Joe Casey, Joe Kelly, Ed McGinnis Drawling, Jeff Loeb, and even, even Michael Turner. Michael Turner went from Fathom Aspen, he came from Top Cow, but he goes to DC, and Michael Turner brings us like the the first proper Kryptonian Supergirl since pre-crisis. All of that time, Supergirl was like a sludgy clone from Lex Luthor 2. Guys, I love comic book continuity. But this 2000s renaissance of Superman was this, this sculpting out of the Superman family. And at that point, the character monthly never really recovered because a lot of these moves seemed like low-hanging fruit, and they, they really just weren't about the guts and the story and what was happening and, and going month to month. And, it, like, even if, if you have Superman talking to a cardboard box, like, make it good. That attitude had left. So, it's like you, you kind of do, little pun intended, a little bit like an onslaught. You just keep introducing things, you keep doing callbacks, you keep doing member berries. This was all in the early 2000s. Doesn't it all sound familiar? But Jeff Loeb, I remember Jeff Loeb and, and Ed McGinnis, they bring back crypto. And it popped for like a day. 
a day. And then people moved on and people just didn't care. And then crypto kind of became a story liability. And it's not a thing. It's just not it's, it's just not a thing. Crypto never lended anything to Superman other than to move merchandise and to, to make it look differently for the children, for the kid audience. And that's the intent of crypto. Crypto as a story element, even within the comics, we few and far between moments. The only thing I remember from that run, run, and anyone out there, feel free to 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 check this. It's uh, crypto wants the Thanksgiving turkey, and he, and he and he rips he rips apart the oven. He rips uh, the 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 oven door off, and you know, like he kind of does that because he's a dog. He's crypto, and he doesn't know how strong he is. And it was it was a, it was a cool thing, but it wasn't as cool as when John Byrne revealed how Superman shapes which is something locked into lore of that character. I don't know, guys. Crypto. Like, we all need crypto for a launch movie. We need crypto in movie 12. 